Hello, welcome to another episode of the Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial series. In this episode, we will learn to manipulate objects. If you zoom out so you can see the whole area and try to click on the yellow marker that you originally selected, you're going to find that you are unable to select it. Instead, you select a large pink box that surrounds the room which in the cell view window appears as default set stage trig. Objects getting in the way of each other is a basic problem, but it has an easy solution. With default set stage trig, press the number one twice. The default set stage trig will disappear. Press one again and it reappears. What happens is, is the first time you press one, the selected object, or if you got multiple objects selected, they're made so they ignore the mouse and you can click through them. They are also made transparent. Of course, it doesn't matter with default set stage trig because it's already transparent. Now, the second time you press one, the item is hidden completely rather than just transparent. And then the third time, it is returned to normal, fully visible and clickable. So go ahead and press one again until default set stage trig disappears again. And then try selecting, hiding, and ghosting other items, such as walls and furniture, until you're pretty comfortable with the process. If you have unselected an item while it is ghosted or invisible, you can't see it in the render window. Instead, select it in the cell view. It'll be one of the blue named objects. Click the title bar of the render window and press one until it becomes fully visible again. For many render window keys, the window must be active. If another window like cell view is selected, then the key will do nothing. So if you select an item in cell view, you then have to click on the title bar of the render window. Clicking within the render window would change your selection. Then your key press should work. Now, if you feel like you completely messed up which items you have ghosted and which are not, you can press F5 to return all items to their normal, visible, clickable state. Now that we have an idea of how to look at objects, let's see how to move them around a bit. Since we're still getting used to working with the controls, it's a good idea to work in a throwaway plugin, so that way we avoid saving accidental modifications to objects that may affect the base game or other mods. So what we'll go ahead and do is use the testquest.esp plugin, go up here to File, Data, and then we're gonna double click testquest.esp and then set as active file and then click OK. Go ahead and select an object in the render window. You can move the object simply by holding the left mouse button down and dragging the object around. If you notice your object jumps around rather than moving slowly, this may be because you have grid snapping on. You can toggle this with the Q hotkey or with this button in the main toolbar. You want to make note that you're only moving the object on the horizontal plane or the XY axis of the world. Now you can move objects up and down by holding Z while dragging it like this. And then you can also hold down the X key to make the object move on the X axis. Or C to constrain the movement to the Y axis. The reason why it's C instead of Y is because Z, X, and C are all right next to each other which is pretty convenient. Rotation is accomplished by simply selecting an object and holding the right mouse button while moving the mouse. Rotation is affected by angle snapping using the snap to angle button or control Q in render window. And also can be access constrained by holding X, C, or Z while rotating. Objects rotate around their pivot point indicated by a small yellow plus. Being aware of pivot points will become important for users who expect to be working with the render window frequently. Objects can be scaled as well by holding S while dragging with the left mouse button. If you make things too large or small, it might look out of place, so you want to avoid using this tool unless it's really required for what you're doing. If you do something bad by accident, don't worry about it. Just about anything you do in the render window can be undone by clicking the undo button on the main toolbar or hitting Control Z on your keyboard. Now, if you've undone too many steps, you can use the redo button or Control Y to redo what you've changed. And that's it for this week's episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Join us next week when we will be learning about gizmos. Until then, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>